Good Lord. Hello, everybody. I am Wendy Nestrom, your host with Environmental Social Justice, and I am here with my good friend, Dave Krikak. He is the Vice President of Adult Services with Electronics Recycling Solutions. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks, Wendy. So fun to be here with you. And it's so good to see you again. Um, guys, just so you know, Dave and I met back in the Nashville trip that I did a while back, and we totally bonded over everything that he's doing because you are doing wonderful work. Oh, and thanks, um I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, I'm going to really start gushing over this. But before we jump into ERS and what you guys do, yeah. I would like to talk about your background because you studied law. Sure. You worked in communications. You're now helping people with special needs get training and employment and independence. So how did that transition really happen? Yeah, well, it happened when my daughter was born. Uh, you know, I moved from California out to Tennessee. But in California, I worked in the defense industry, a technology guy, worked on the B-2 bomber from inception through production. So I was kind of a nerd, you know, classified programs, all the fun stuff, stealth missiles, stealth fighter, all that fun stuff. Um, and then from there into law enforcement. So I worked for Culver City Police Department for about five years and a couple of years with Williamson County. I'm sorry, with the uh, Sheriff's Department, LA County Sheriff's Department, out of the Walnut wow. Industry Stations. I just flashed to where I moved to Tennessee. Um, but I, during that time, uh, you know, first computers were coming out, email, all that fun stuff. And I've always been a nerd when it comes to technology. Um, but my daughter gets born with autism and autism is something new. Uh, there's a yeah. doctor, Dr. Brutico in, in Irvine, and we, we hook up with him and find out that he knows what autism is. It's a spectrum and all this. So we're learning. You know, she's one of the first classes that was kind of mainstreamed into school. So we went through that. She's she's kind of been a trailblazer, uh, very high functioning. So basically, we moved out to Tennessee and uh, <clears throat> obviously marketing, technology, <clears throat> public service. And then, you know, technology is a big thing for me. So I, I latched on to technology companies. So uh, kind of um, majored with marketing and PR and, and when it comes to the software development, that industry uh, worked for a company that did, uh, we kind of partnered with Dr. Shawan who created some technology for gunshot, you know, uh, detection. So we partnered with GIS overlaying with uh, gunshot detection. So you fire a weapon in Los Angeles, specifically the Watts area. And within three seconds, it pinpoints on a map where that gunshot came from acoustic sensors. And then we would dispatch through automated notification law enforcement. And, you know, it was the a big deal. It was called Shot Spotter. We launched it in Watt Station. And the year we did that, while I was in Tennessee launching this technology that was serving California because of the connection with the Sheriff's Department, um, they had a 99% reduction of gunfire that year. So the celebratory Happy New Year gunfire went away. Uh, they didn't know it was just a one mile square area. They thought it was all of LA County. So, you know, whoop, you, know you, you gotta fool the bad guys sometimes. Uh, but always in, involved in technology all the while my daughter's growing up all the while she's going through i'm doing the the pr the marketing the growing companies building companies all that fun stuff and she's graduated from high school and i'm like well what's she going to do for a living you know and they have this transition mm -hmm. program that basically you're supposed to get you know some training on what it's like to work in the real world and they're replacing salt and pepper shakers at, you know, the local pizza place. And I'm like, well, that's not really a job, you know? So, uh, you know, things started to change and, uh, you know, my, my, my focus started to become, well, who's going to do something about Sarah? So kind of prayed about that. Like, who's going to do something about her, you know, and she graduates and, and I get this tap on the shoulder and I was in between jobs, worked kind of, uh, out of one position. And I'm like, I think I need to do something about Sarah and uh, started a nonprofit foundation uh, and uh, started a nonprofit thrift store. And for 15 years, we hired 25 young adults with disabilities. We brought them in from high school and in from the community. And uh, at, we had 50 employees, 25 special needs adults and 25 people that work with them. And that was my business was really helping them becoming independent. We launched an eBay business. I hired my kid named Robert who uh, did our computer renovations and recycling. That was the hook. Uh, and we started selling these computers through the store and on eBay. And then we just kind of built the commerce. And about 15 years after that, they redeveloped the shopping center. And I pivoted to electronics recycling. B2 
because of the fact that there was an opportunity uh, in Gallatin, a small uh, for-profit business that we've migrated to a nonprofit called Electronics Recycling Solutions. But my my whole world is special. That's my yes. whole world. I talk to parents left and right. They call me. Church people say, "Hey, there's a there's a couple of church with a son with autism, and you know he's graduating from high school." I'm like, "Call me." So I've been involved in that world for a long time. Uh, I've been involved in the um, reimbursement for the insurance companies through health services providers through our parent company called uh, Health Connect America. And uh, now I'm really 100% focused on electronics recycling. We've launched um, a website called uh, Devices for Autism, where the eight states surrounding Tennessee could take their devices that they want responsibly recycled, put them into a, uh, a container, a box, you know, at FedEx Kinko's, and send it for free, print a label and send it for free. And it comes to us and our special needs adults uh, in Gallatin, we'll recycle it responsibly. So for the past four years, really just focusing on getting this 7 million tons of electronic wastes out of the landfill and helping eliminate the unemployment rate, which is about 85% among. When you told me that number, I was, I mean, part of me was not surprised, but another part of me was kind of very surprised that we allowed this to happen. Yeah, it's crazy. So irresponsibly recycling is a big deal. I mean, our big companies are Hospital Corporation of America. You know, they've got 500,000 or 205,000, something like that. It's crazy how many employees they have. Uh, and we it took about a year to negotiate that contract because we had to prove to them that we could responsibly recycle their data. Uh, so we're doing certificates of destruction and, you know, getting not only the the, the systems refurbished, and resold, but wiping out their data and validating the fact we do. R2 certification is a big deal. Um, so we're R2 certified. Tractor Supply is another large corporation. We're looking for probably one or two more. Uh, we have eight young adults now that do the work. They There's two sections. There's the breakdown where they just take apart all the parts and pieces and we sell those off. Then there's also hooking up a laptop like my Dell that I have here and then refurbishing it, testing all the components. Uh, wiping it down, making sure all the stickers are gone, uh, and then reinstalling an operating system, listing it on eBay, e-commerce, it's another skill yeah. set, and then selling it, packing and shipping and, and uh, that whole process. So we are that circularity piece of large corporations that after about three years, they say, what are we going to do with this stuff? You know, it's, it's, it's time to get rid of it. We'll go pick it up for free or sometimes through, you know, devices for autism, they could ship it to us. And that's the eight states around uh, Tennessee that, that border us. And we're hoping to take that nationally. I think we're in the process of doing that now. So that's <laughs> our person. So that's no, it. I, 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 no it, it, it's I don't think people understand the quantity of e-waste that's generated. And I did not know until I visited your facility in September and I saw the pallet upon pallet upon pallet yeah. of computers. Yep. And I realized, you know, people do upgrade every three years. They realize, yeah, it's time. First of all, I think computers should last longer than that, but you know, that's a different story. Yep. But people just, you know, they say, okay, time to upgrade, time to upgrade. And that's waste yep. with metals and yep. materials going into landfills to get leached out and damage yep. the soil and the groundwater. And you're stopping that from going into the landfills Yep. But I really, I mean, and the environmental side of it, the pollution side of it is utterly fantastic. Circularity, obviously. Really want to talk about the people because yeah. on your website, you have said that you worried with respect to your daughter. You said, what happens when you're gone? Yeah. What kind of skill set will she have? Will she be able yeah. to live independently? And you've done that quite well with some yeah. of the people yeah. in your group. You yeah, have a couple success stories that are amazing. We do. I love bragging on our success stories. Uh, we have three this last year. Uh, Alex is probably the one that's, he's more, you know, he's like the celebrity. Uh, it took about four years, uh, three and a half years to walk him through getting comfortable, working part time. Uh, we put him in a management position where he was managing the front desk. So customers we were open to the public. So the customers yeah. would come in and, and recycle their computers or have them wipe out their data or crush their hard drives. Uh, and Alex was doing that. We walked him through this process and kind of building up his confidence. And we partnered with FedEx and Dell on a project that they were doing. Uh, and uh, when they got returns in stuff that didn't match their ability to resell, we had kind of 
throw it over the fence. And, and we had this opportunity to do a pilot with them. And he was instrumental in that. So he started to build up that confidence. We walked him through the interview process and he's doing the same thing in our business that he could do there because they were, they have 30,000 returns per month at FedEx. Oh, wow. And, and it's like, they do this work for Dell. Right. And it's like, we go over there and we take a tour and he's looking around going, Whoa. And they got rows and rows of computers coming in and renovating. And it's like, this is just a big version of what we already do. Walk them through the process. He goes from making twelve fifty an hour with us to making seventeen fifty an hour with them, going from part time to full time, four ten hour days. He never thought he could work full time. He's now in his own condo with a roommate he met at FedEx, and that is the ultimate outcome. That's the ultimate. You no know, parents can go. My kids could become independent and yes. literally take a rest. You know, take a breath of. He's going to be okay. Yep. And then you, guys you, know, get, and you also build up the confidence. One of the things when I, I personally witnessed there was you encourage people to interact with others. Because I, I have family and friends that have children with autism and young adults with autism and on the spectrum of highly functioning to not so much. Yeah. And it's that building up the confidence saying, you know, you can do this. And you would call people over. You say, no, come over and say hi. Like, oh, I don't want to. Yeah. You would say, yes, you Stay do. And handshake, look in their yeah. face. Those are all things that we're teaching. You know, like, in, in at work, you have a you know have a water cooler, but sits around and talk about their weekend and stuff. We want them to have that, you know. Yes. So it's it's what to you know don't eat somebody else's food out of the refrigerator. You know that's theirs. I mean, it's like it's all the social things, right? It's you know we don't you know get deep. But that still food. happens in some offices. Some people oh, just oh yeah yeah yeah. You know, <laughs> but we're working that out there, and they have it's a safe place. Yeah. They can make mistakes. They could, you know, they can say things that are inappropriate. And we're there to job coach them and to help them. And I'll tell you, as a parent, I'll put my parent hat on. We need to get out of the way. We need to yeah. get out of the way and let somebody else challenge them to move up. And Alex Barrett and now Jasper, who's a gal that worked with us for three months, she got hired with one of our parent companies uh, that support us, Health Connect America, in their IT department. And it's Love like... It dream come true for her and they love her because she's the hardest working person in their it shop and she's I'm basically sure. i mean she's she's Focus. i mean active. everyone that i saw i mean first of all the thing that blew my mind after i saw the pallets of materials is um there are a couple of computers that need to be looked at and here you know i would be terrified to take apart a computer and one of one of the guys just grabbed it grabbed a screwdriver took it and popped it off and took the out the and oh yeah we could take the he's like i can fix this right away and I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's just magic. <laughs> I mean, the ability to pull something apart, put it back together, refurbish it, and then sell it. Yeah. Um, that's a skill set. So it's it's e -com skill set, it's e commerce, it's interacting with customers, it's you know, how to manage your activities during the day, it's having a timeline, and you know, it's just we're constantly oh, yeah. adjusting these things. Now we're transitioning with high school. So the Sumner County High School, which is our local high school, we're bringing their transition students in. And it could be any disability, not just autism. It could be any disability at all. We're like, bring them. Because if they have an interest in working in an environment that's safe, that they can learn a skill. Uh, and I know Mike Wolf talks about this uh, all the time. And uh, uh, it's it's a big deal with, with just the trades. you know. And this is a trade. This is a trade that pays really well. Um, and oh, this absolutely. is something that, that, that is an opportunity for them to to kind of move up in an environment where, you know, this is something that you could learn very easily. And then they could take, you know, classes after, after work, which Jasper is doing as well. She wants to get her CNA and, uh, you know, our company's helping with that. Uh, but it's a big, it, it's that thing of, it's the passion of what we get to do to take them from where they are to where they need to be. Just like a teacher would, we're just having to, we happen to do that through electronics recycling. Uh, and we are, you know, basically looking for some more businesses. Uh, we, we're, you know, we got an ERP system. We're, we're using state-of-the-art stuff. We have an eBay store, uh, but we also support other nonprofits that, you know, maybe they're, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, orphanages over in Africa or Guatemala or something. And we're saying, well, out of the abundance of what we have, we're going to help you out. So oh, wow. we're teaching them a little bit about generosity and corporate, you know, uh, culture and what we can do to help, you know, uh, lift up the next guy. Um, so yeah, that's, it's, it's yeah, an, that's extremely important. 
I mean, going back to um, just my walkthrough and just the, you know, the, meeting everybody and how kind and open they were. You did also tell me you had some people that when they come in and, you know, new employees that come in and one guy in particular was very quiet, didn't yep. want to talk to people. Yep. He ate That's by right. himself. Yeah. Kind of kept to himself. Wouldn't say a word. Wouldn't say a word. And I believe now lives on their own, got their driver's license. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. that kind of transition, I think you said even the parents are like, we never thought that he would be able to move out of the house. Again, yeah. parents need to kind of get out of the way sometimes. And that's, I got to give Derek uh, French, our program director. Uh, oh, Derek's goes. wonderful. He yeah. walked them through, you know, driving in the parking lot. I mean, he's he's not a driver training guy, but he gave them the confidence to get outside their comfort zone, just like with Alex, and to walk him through the interview process and do mock interviews. And, you know, that's everybody needs someone to come alongside them. And we just happen to do this through electronics recycling. And it's it's the E and the S of the ESG. You know, it's environment, it's social, and, you know, it's for them, it's justice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> The governance will come, but I mean, the social justice, I mean, I, you know, again, pulling from friends and family that have kids that, you know, that are on the spectrum and some of the parents just don't know what to do. And they're like, is my kid even going to be able to go to college? Oh yeah. And a lot, one thing I have witnessed myself is people who are on spectrum, they have this uncanny ability to focus. Absolutely. And they, you know, they can really just stay and work on something for a very long period of time and be with extreme detail. And that's perfect for engineering. Oh Engineers, God. they need that that concentration. They, that I they don't get tired of it. They don't get tired of it. No, I mean, like hours. Time, it's quitting time. You know. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. Oh. You know, they and just. Want I mean, even coding. I mean, co I know some coders that will work like three days solid, sleep for two days, and get up and do three <laughs> days solid again. I'm like, I don't know how. <laughs> no. No, it's it's a skill set, and you you found it and, and you're highlighting it and you're helping people, which is just magnificent of you to do. And I, I love the fact that you do it, but most importantly, you need sponsors, Dave. Yeah. Well, we're a nonprofit. We're a nonprofit. You are not, yeah. You're a nonprofit. So you need donations. Yeah. Yeah. And not only do we need, you know, some large corporate, you know, organizations to like, there's Facebook, there's Oracle right here in Nashville. They're moving in. It's like, Hey, I'm going to go knock on the door. Um, so we're this, you know, We've been so busy building the organization and getting the infrastructure there for the past three and a half years. So now it's time to really branch out. And it's really, it's an awareness campaign. And, you know, I should, I need to take responsibility for that. We've been so busy doing what we're doing now. It's like, we need to grow. We need to get, you know, we got people on a waiting list. Uh, so yeah, we could use a couple other large organizations and, and just, you know, whether it's parents to come volunteer um, and grants, you know, big thing with grant funding is, you know, they want to know what you're, doing to solve things in the world. Well, we're solving things right here in middle Tennessee. You know, we're yeah. ask Alex's parents about where he's at right now and what that would take or Barrett or Jasper. And they're, they, they're just like, it's a dream come true. So, you know, we're really focused on what we do, but also it's time to start looking out and because yeah. and every organization has parents with, with special needs adults or oh, kids absolutely. and absolutely. they get that and they're wondering, what do we do when they graduate and what happens when we're gone? So we really have to set them up for success. And as I've said, um, everyone offers something. Everyone has a special gift that they are very good at something. They can do something well, and it's just finding it. And it's not always a parent. It's not, you know, a lot of times when you grow up, you're like, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I mean, I became a geologist. What was I thinking? <laughs> so <laughs> everyone finds their way. And you are kind of helping these kids that may not know, their parents probably don't know. And you're saying, hey, let's try this. And they're excelling at it. Yeah. They are just absolutely excelling at yeah. it. And we, we, you know, we're out, we're out of the box. We, we're so far out yeah. of the box, we can't even find the box. And we, we're constantly changing things. We're thinking about getting into phones, you know, renovating phones. Yeah. It's almost like yes. whenever the awareness, they're like, well, can you guys do solar panels? Yes, we can. You know, I mean, we're going to, we had a shipment of solar panels come in. We're like, we could take those apart. Uh, because our, you know we're, we're screw guns going crazy uh, and we're responsibly recycling it. That's the thing that people just need to know that when they give us their stuff, it's not going to end up in a landfill. It's going to be responsibly recycled. The data will be wiped out. You'll get certificates of destruction that has all the information and, and we wipe it out. We write over it and, you know, it's DOD level stuff. 
And uh, that's what I love. Yeah, explain the, the Department of Defense level stuff. Let people know what that means because that's extremely important. Yeah, I mean, if you got stuff on your hard drive, we get accountants, you know, Hospital Corporation of America, they're a big deal, right? They got data. There's, you know, there's personal data. So not only we do we wipe out the data, but we write over it six times. So it's wiped out, reformatted, and then written over six times. That's one level. Then we have some customers that say, I want you to crush it. So we have this gigantic crusher and we crush the hard drives. And that's the funnest thing. I think you guys came to this thing. Yeah, they're like put it in the big machine. Oh, the big, you know, the jars eat it up. It goes and right in and just crushes. And it's really, well, those things we sell off the parts and pieces. We get 20 cents a pound for those, those pieces. So we'll do it any way they want because the data destruction is key. So we're documenting everything we get in. Everything that comes in, we document and where it went. And the data is documented so it's by serial number so you know the hard drive number the fact it's been responsibly recycled and wiped out and then we send certificates of destruction and we do that in massive scale so i picked up 600 hard drives from um from a college and uh it took us probably six months to get those all wiped out but we got them and we took care of it and you know the small hard drives and the big ones um but we're we know how to do it and and we're good at it so we need we some do more. it well. You yeah. do it so well. I mean, and just, I really would, I, I personally would love to see you guys just nationwide because the work you're doing is great. It's, you know, the social justice aspect, obviously I'm a fan of, but keeping stuff out of landfills and recycling is fantastic. Yeah. So um, best way to find you, Dave, where, where, where's, if someone's yeah. like, I want to work with Dave, I want to donate, how do they find you? Yep. It's electronicsrecyclingsolutions.org. And then there's also awesome. devicesforautism.com. And uh, if you have to pay, if it's outside of those eight states right now and you have to pay 20 bucks or $15 to send us your, your stuff, you could pack three you know, uh, laptops in there and send it. But if it's within those eight states right now, uh, it's free. You print a free label, drop it at FedEx Kinko's. We take care of it and send you the information. Uh, but then we also do free pickups. So we're getting gigantic trucks to go to local businesses picking up all their stuff, bringing it back, and then doing what we do. And I love what you do. So yeah. guys, please check out Dave. Please check out Electronic Recycling Solutions. They are doing amazing work and important work, which is, you know, the crux of the whole thing with what we want to see. People getting jobs, people living independently, people just feeling valued, because that is the most important thing. So Dave, thank you so much for your time. Thank and you, Wendy. Great to spend time with you. Always a pleasure. And please, as you guys have, you know, more information, more updates, expansions, come back on, tell us about it, because what you're doing, we need to know about. Thanks. Absolutely. And guys, I'm Wendy Nystrom, your host with Environmental Social Justice. We are now proudly sponsored by BioLargo. They just make life better. So go check them out and we'll see you next time. Take care. Wow, is it slow today?